looking at animal and plant-based nutrients, like say perhaps protein, omega-3s, calcium, vitamin A, etc., are some superior than the others? Because I'm um, a dietetic student and oftentimes they'll say, uh, well, you should go for an animal-based iron source or something like that. So are plant nutrients superior to animal nutrients or vice versa? Well, when you think of this um, let's say on an individual nutrient basis, I mean, obviously plants have some nutrients that animals don't have and vice versa. Right. Um, and we can speak on that basis if you, if you want. I, uh, rather, however, I would like to speak of the differences in nutrients between animal and plant-based foods in, you know, from the uh, broader perspective, you know, the total composition. Yeah. Animal-based foods, for example, are generally high in protein, as you know, uh, also it helps high in fat. Uh, they have no complex carbohydrates. Right. They really have no antioxidants unless the animal was eating those things before, in fact, it was slaughtered. Yeah. Uh, and of course, also at the same time, the kind of protein and the kind of fat that animals have is rather different from plants. Plants, on the other hand, they have uh, loads of antioxidants. Absolutely. Uh, uh, lots of complex carbohydrates and so forth. So you know the story. Yep. And uh, although some plants are very high in fat, at times nuts, for example, or avocados or coconut breath, on one hand, on the other hand, the composition of those fats is rather different. And even to go beyond that stuff, if you take animal foods, animal-based foods as a group, as a group, uh, the total fat intake is going to be high. The protein is going to be high, and so forth, as I said before, and plant-based foods are rather, rather much the opposite. So the nutrient composition of those two kinds of foods is very different. Now, I, I also have to say that there's a third group of foods, right? I call them foods, just for the sake of argument, and that's the processed foods. Processed foods are the mixed bag. Yeah. It's, uh, it's stuff made up, and oftentimes it's stuff synthesized. You know the lab in some uh, company a laboratory, yeah. and uh, so the processed foods are not good. They're oftentimes high in fat and salt and sugar in order to please our taste. Yeah. Let's face it, that's really what it's all about. So I, I think there's two classes of foods that I suggest avoiding: animal foods and processed foods, yeah. and only one kind of food that really has the capability of creating health and preventing disease, and that's the whole whole plant-based foods. So. Um, yeah, there are nutrient differences, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but we have to then go beyond acknowledging that fact and talk about what do those differences really mean in terms of health. And I, I, I have come to like this particular statement, namely, there are no nutrients in animal-based foods that are not in, uh, better uh, obtained in plant-based foods. Mm -hmm. So you can pick out protein and say, okay, you know, animals have protein. Yes. In fact, a lot of people think meat and protein is synonymous. It's not. Right. But they tend to think that. So animal-based foods have a lot of protein, but plants have all the protein we need. And it's somewhat different, yes. Uh, animal-based foods are the kind of, I mean, animal-based proteins are the kind that actually promote body growth at a faster rate yeah. and do plant-based uh, uh, protein. And that's an old story, and that's really what gave rise to the idea that animal protein is high quality. Right. It was only high quality because it was able to stimulate faster rate of growth of, let's say, farm animals. Yeah. This is what the farmer wanted, so they called it high quality. Hmm. Uh, so, um, yeah, you, all, all of these differences exist, and it's hard to put your finger on it, any one of them, yeah. you know, at the exclusion of the other as being more or less important.